Well, what's up guys? Shade Tree Surgeon here. Happy Mother's Day to all you hard working moms out there. I'm gonna have a little bit of a special episode today. Jessica's on call till 8 a.m. with her job, so ain't gonna be no drinking for us today. Uh, I could drink. As a show of solidarity, I shan't drink either, because I'm big like that. So yeah, we're gonna roll out on the bikes, get some lunch, drop off presents at Jess's mom's house and my mom's house. Let Jess sleep in right now, taking care of all the animals, which actually takes a minute. Right now in our house, it's Harvey Wallbanger, Dexter the dog, Amadeus, Perdia, Delilah, Gertie, the kitties, Fuck Fuck, Boner Town, Shit Rock the Kitty, and Kisa, plus two foster kittens. We actually had six foster kittens, but we've given away four of them. So a lot of these animals are foster animals. Some of you may or may not know, Jessica actually works at an animal clinic. And so we take in fosters when we can. We get them out to people. You know, you can't save them all, but we take in some here and there. In the past two years, we've probably rehomed you know, probably 60 or 70 different rescues between different dogs and it cats. It can be heartbreaking at times too, because you can't save them all. And the conditions you get these dogs in is freaking terrible sometimes. Take Gertie here, for example. Sweet little girl, right? This dog has been bred to death. See these nipples like that? Get those pit bulls that are real popular these days, those ones that are kind of short, squat, and wide. This is the mom that makes them. And you can see she's covered in scars. She got scars all over her head. She got, if you look at her lips, they've been ripped open a bunch of times from being bit. Scars all over her back. All this stuff from being locked in a concrete cage all over her back and feet. Basically, they just breed and breed and breed this dog, and then they just throw her in the street to die when they're done with her. This is where your puppies come from. Same thing with Delilah here got her she had never actually I don't think she'd ever actually run on grass before we got her she was just all she did was breed little Boston Terriers in a freaking concrete cage outside done takes a little bit of time to take care of them all in the morning but the end of the problem is huge and overwhelming and you can't save them all but what you got to do is you got to do the little bit that you can do what happens with people who try to save them all is they get overwhelmed and they can't fucking do it you got to do what you can. Here and there, if you do a little bit, if everybody did that, the world would be a better place. These are the two kittens we have left. We started out with six. The neighbor turned into us. It is kitten season here in Florida. And out of everything, kittens are the hardest to fucking place. Nobody wants fucking cats. Can't believe we found homes for four of them already. Yeah, a couple new additions to the helmet too. Got my boy TikTok sticker on here. That's a big fucker, but I got a big ass head and a big ass helmet, so it'll fit just fine. Hope you don't mind sharing a little space with Justin the Apparition and Motor Tripping here. Justin the Apparition's actually got a big announcement coming up for his channel. You should go check that out. Don't want to spoil it here, but it's uh, pretty fucking cool. I suppose it's about time we actually rode some motorcycles, huh? Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and head over to my parents' house first. Uh, it's a little weird. I don't exactly have what you'd call a normal relationship with my parents. Well, Mother's Day seems a fitting day as any to delve into the deep dark and sordid history of shade tree surgeon anyway one of the weirdness of my relationship with my parents is i actually wasn't raised by them i was raised by my grandparents my grandfather and grandmother raised me like i was their child and my older sister too and i mean i mean i knew who my mom was and i knew she was my mother like i had a concept of what a mother was you know what i mean as far as my dad goes i mean i had a my grandfather was like my dad, but uh, again, I had a concept of what a dad was supposed to be, and I had met him a few times, and like I knew who he was. I knew I was supposed, when I saw him, I, I would always be encouraged to be excited to see him and call him dad, and, but yeah, it was all just kind of an act. 
But anyway, regardless, you know, plenty of kids grow up in a goddamn orphanage without any parents at all. At least I had my grandparents there raising me. But that's its own set of weirdness anyway. We grew up poor, too. I mean, not as poor as a third world country, but it was pretty bad. They used to call it dirt floor poor, baby. It was the kind of poor that every month they'd shut the water and the electricity off because they couldn't pay the bill. And we'd have to clean out the bathtub real good and fill it up full of water so we'd have drinking water and you know, water to cook with. We never really went hungry, but god damn, we ate some dicey shit, that's for fucking sure. You know, when you're a kid, you don't really notice that shit. Even as a child, I, I don't really remember being poor. I mean, we didn't have stuff, but I, I don't know. It, you just don't you just don't fucking notice. At least I didn't. See, my grandfather was a World War II veteran. He came from a real small town, and you, know, you don't hear about this a lot, but a lot of those World War II vets, when they came back, man, they just couldn't ever get their shit together, and he was one of them. Never really held a steady job, kind of a jack of all trades. Did work here and there on the government dole, that sort of thing. But the man fought through all the islands in Iwo Jima and he was in the occupation in Hiroshima after they dropped the bomb for years. The horrors of that man is seen I can't even imagine. The kind of dude you can't blame him for ever getting his shit together. He was from a small town. He actually joined willingly. He wasn't drafted. Back then, it was the only way to get out of your small town. Grew up something crazy with like nine brothers in this small town. And I think like seven of them actually died before he even joined the military. Different kind of stuff. Accidents in the mill where a lot of people worked. A couple of them died. A couple of them died in bar fights. He wasn't exactly from the nice part of town. If you catch my drift. So he joined the military because that was a. That was a one-way ticket out of that town, that's for sure. And my grandma, Jean, she was a sweetheart, and he came back and scooped her up and moved them all to Florida. Now, my grandma, she was from, she was a rich girl. That's kind of that classic story, that, you know, bored little rich girl from the nice part of town falls in love with that bad boy on a motorcycle. Her parents were real well off, and they fucking hated, they hated that she was with my grandfather. So it sounds like something out of a storybook or a movie, right? Small town boy from the wrong side of the track joins up, fight, fights the great war, comes back covered in glory, a hero, scoops up that rich girl from the nice part of town who's an artist and runs off with her to start a family. Sounds like the kind of thing that ought to have a happy ending. Except this is real life, and in real life there ain't no happy endings. No, sir, ain't got no happy ending at all. It makes me wonder if I should even tell this whole story because it ain't, it ain't happy. It's dark, it's depressing, and it ends in pain and sadness. You see, in the perfect world, they live happily ever after. They have their couple of kids, retire, and sit in their rocking chairs. In the real world, my grandfather was so fucking shell-shocked by all the shit he saw over there that he could barely keep his shit together. He had severe, undiagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder back before they even knew that was a thing. The man was on or off. There was no middle ground. One second, he'd be happy, jovial Bob, everybody's friend, everybody loved him. He laughed loud, liked to drink his beers, have a good time. Kind of dude would slap you on the back so hard it hurt, but you didn't mind because he was a great guy. And then sometimes he'd just switch off and nobody knew what the fuck happened. The kind of thing where he'd be joking, cracking cold Budweiser's and tasseling my hair. He'd be sitting next to the grill flipping hamburgers and all of a sudden he'd go quiet and get some weird far away look in his eyes. And he'd turn to me and say, this is what they smelled like, boy. When we went on the islands, they'd hide in caves and we couldn't get them out, so we filled them up full of fire. And he'd go, this is what the Japs smelled like when they were burning alive. You could hear them scream. He'd say it smelled just like this, just like barbecue. I remember it smelled good. And then he'd go real quiet and he wouldn't say anything for the rest of the day. He was a good man. He was strong and he did the best he could with the hand he was dealt. And it was a shitty fucking hand. Now my grandmother was a completely different story. 
I believe the term best used to describe her was crazy as a shithouse rat. As far as I know, she spent most of the 70s in and out of a state-run mental institution. But, old Ronnie Reagan, he let her out just in time to raise up me and my sister. Like I said, they stayed married because that's what you did back then. But her and my grandfather didn't get along real well. You know, a lot of it probably had to do with the fact that she was an artist and a little bit of a hippie. Kind of woman who respected life, but in a crazy way. She was totally schizophrenic. I don't know how to explain it. She's the kind of person who'd cuss my grandfather up and down and start crying and breaking plates and freaking out and beating her chest. All because he ran over some weeds that were in the lawn that were sprouting little white flowers. And she thought they were beautiful. She said that he destroyed them. I mean, it was shit like that. It's hard to understand. One of her favorite things to do was to read us bedtime stories. Reading was a huge deal. But the bedtime stories she rolled me... But the bedtime stories she read me and my older sister weren't... Weren't little kids' books. Her idea was to read us Stephen King and Robert A. Heinlein and all sorts of weird, dark horror. One of my prized possessions is a photorealistic portrait that she painted of herself. It was hanging over my bed ever since I could remember as a child. It's a painting that she did of herself burning alive in hell, naked from the waist up. Like I said, she was a bit odd. There was good times too. She was the kind of person who'd take us out in the fields and the forest behind our house, searching for goblins and fairies and upturning logs. She told us, she told us they were real. And it, it was pretty amazing as a kid, this sense of wonderment going out there looking for supernatural creatures and going through the ditches and looking for trolls and goblins and all that. You know, not every kid gets to do that with their parent. And the way that she spun these stories, because she was a writer too, made them seem so believable. Yeah, it was weird, but like I said, when you're a kid, you don't know it's weird. It just seems normal. This is Shade Tree Surgeon's origin story. I was raised by a broken man who only wanted to do good by his family, but always found himself unable to. And an insane artist who looked at the world with a sense of wonderment that's perfect to inspire a child, but was also so fractured that she couldn't help but make things horrible. I can keep going. I know the whole thing by heart, but like I said, it ain't a pretty story. There ain't no happy ending. It's got some funny bits, because they all do. It's up to you to make the funny bits. There are some good times and some pretty awesome character building experiences. If no one wants to listen to it, I probably won't bother. Why don't you let me know? So yeah, you let me know if you want to hear the rest of this story. I'll probably put it in a separate playlist called Shade Tree Origins. Sounds real cool like a comic book, right? <laughs>